etched in the minds of every man are pictures, some happy, some sad, but all worthwhile. If he is wise, he will learn from them. We can turn it all around right now. Nice game, play it hard, let's win this thing on three. One, two, three. Win! The Atlanta Falcons 2000 season was a portrait of a team trying to regain its championship luster. They battled for 16 weeks, but in the end, key injuries and one of the league's toughest schedules proved too much to overcome. Yet even in their darkest days, they never lost their determination. Focus, let's keep going. We're here for four quarters. It was a season in which Coach Dan Reeves said his players learned something about themselves. Go for the ball, baby, let's go. We need this one. And because they never gave up and never stopped fighting, the Falcons were moving in the right direction at season's end. Firing across the middle, it's Jefferson. Jamal Anderson gets the call, sweeping to the right side. The 2000 Atlanta Falcons played with pride, and in their journey, they showed promise for the future. Welcome to the Georgia Dome on a Sunday afternoon. There's nothing like an opening day to really stir your passion as a football fan and, and really to see what the Falcons have. Fireworks going off inside the dome. The season got off to an explosive start as rookie Derek Vaughn returned his first kickoff 57 yards. The run back set the stage for one of Morton Anderson's five field goals in the first half as the Falcons scored on seven consecutive drives. Chandler will throw again, setting up. Firing long, far side of the field. Man out there, Terrence Mathis. Touchdown, Falcons! Wow, what a throw and a catch by Terrence Mathis! Late in the third quarter, the Falcons put the game out of reach. Cornerback Ashley Ambrose made an instant impact in his first game as a Falcon. After joining the team as a free agent from New Orleans, he wasn't the only newcomer to find the end zone. Jefferson makes the catch. The long ball again from Chris Chandler, this time to Sean Jefferson. Jefferson's 48-yard touchdown reception helped seal the win for the Falcons but also proved his deep threat potential. Hardworking Jefferson, a veteran of 10 NFL seasons, was acquired through free agency and paid immediate dividends. He led the team with a career high 60 receptions. Also in the receiving crew was versatile Tim Dwight who continued to be just as dangerous after the catch in 2000. 30, 25, 20. Tim Dwight down and cutting across into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Chandler back. He's looking. He's firing for the end zone, yes. and it's caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Tight end Reggie Kelly took over the starting position in his second NFL season using a strong 6-3 frame to snag 31 receptions for 340 yards. Wide open is Reggie Kelly. 15, 10, 5, touchdown foul. But the backbone of the receiving core was veteran Terrence Mathis, who finished with 50 or more catches for his seventh consecutive season, a franchise record. Touchdown, Terrence! He is the Falcons' all-time leader with 522 receptions. And in week three, he had even more reason to celebrate. Following a 15-yard pass from Chris Chandler, Mathis became the team's all-time leader in receiving yards. 
but it was the defense that stole the show, pressuring Steve Berline all day, resulting in four sacks and two interceptions. Berline coming near side, intercepted! Ashley Ambrose makes the interception. 40, 35, 30, and run out of bounds. Berline will put it up. Right side, intercepted by Ray Buchanan. Ball is loose, he loses it. Falcons have it, they have another turnover. Special teams also joined in on the fun. It is blocked. Ball has been blocked, and the Falcons are going to have some great field position. They recover it at the 22-yard line. Here is the snap in the hole. The kick is blocked, and it is no good. On the offensive side, Jamal Anderson carried the ball 22 times for 96 yards, showing his 1998 Pro Bowl form on his first touchdown of the season. Anderson into the end zone, touchdown Falcons. Late in the fourth quarter, Anderson broke free for a 42-yard run. Anderson, 45, 50, 40, 35, 30, far sideline but was stripped of the ball near the end zone. What appeared to be a fumble recovery was later ruled a safety. The bizarre play iced the win. At two and one, they would face the defending Super Bowl champions in a shootout for first place in the NFC West. Falcons started fast against the Rams in week four. Anderson into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Untouched into the corner of the end zone. The dirty bird dance from Jamal in the corner of the end zone to ignite this crowd inside the Georgia Dome. With St. Louis leading by four at the half, Kurt Warner's pass was tipped by Henri Crockett and intercepted by Patrick Kearney putting the Falcons in a position to take the lead. The turning point in the Atlanta Falcons 2000 season came on the next play. First and goal from the five. Kozlowski now in motion. Chandler gives the ball to Jamal. Inside, pounding his way back to the line of scrimmage. Ball is loose. Rams pick it up. They pick up the football, and there is no whistle. Keith Lyle is running with the football, but the Falcons are saying that that ball was whistled dead. You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, man. The controversial play sucked the life out of the Falcons, and the Rams pulled away with a 41-20 win. The defeat was a staggering blow to the team's confidence. The Falcons were losing games and losing players. A season-ending injury to linebacker Keith Brooking was critical in a devastating loss to the Eagles in Week 5. A defeat that sent the team into a tailspin that would last for weeks. Falcons, baby, Falcons. Bring it on, man. You got Falcons on you. Falcons gonna win. The Falcons hope to come out of this slump as they began a crucial three-game home stretch, starting with the Saints, a team they had beaten in their last 10 meetings. They gained a 13-7 lead from a 52-yard Chris Chandler bomb to Tim Dwight. Dwight, who makes the catch? 15-10, five, touchdown, Falcons! I saw him coming over, and I go, if he doesn't throw that ball to me, I'm gonna come after him. But when team leader Jesse Tuggle left the game in the third quarter with a knee injury, Saints running back Ricky Williams took advantage, scoring two touchdowns, giving the Saints a 21-13 lead. With less than four minutes to play, Chris Chandler put together a desperation drive, a 14-yard pass to fullback Bob Christian, followed by a 27-yard strike to Sean Jefferson, put the Falcons at the New Orleans 33. Chandler wants to throw, firing near side. Mathis is out there, makes the catch! Touchdown, Falcons! Listen to the dome! Wow, what a catch and a throw! 33-yard touchdown, and Mathis celebrates with an arm extended for the ceiling of the Georgia Dome. The Falcons would need one more play to tie the game. Falcons.
Suns will go for the two point conversion. Chandler's pass to tight end Reggie Kelly fell incomplete. After losing their fifth straight, they took their frustrations out on the Panthers in week nine. Here comes the Falcons blitz. Berline getting it away, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ashley Ambrose. 45, 50. Here he goes. 35, 30. Defensively, the Falcons had their best game against Carolina. They limited the Panthers to just 30 yards on the ground and kept them out of the end zone all day. Berline, straight drop. He's looking, being chased in trouble, and down he goes. Ball is loose. The hit by Ed Jasper and Patrick Kearney. They both converge on Steve Berline. The fumble recovery by Travis Hall. While the Panthers couldn't find the end zone, Jamal Anderson did. And on Jamal, right side. But the outcome remained in question until cornerback Ray Buchanan stepped up and set up Morton Anderson's go-ahead field goal. Here's the snap. The hold. The kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. In the closing seconds, Carolina was looking to make the big play. But it was big play Ray who came up with the game-saving interception. Has it? Falcons have it. Ray Buchanan up with the ball and the Falcons up with the victory. The win against the Panthers was just one bright spot for veteran Ray Buchanan in 2000. In his eighth season, he was assigned to cover the NFL's top receivers and was equal to the challenge. He led the team with six interceptions. Last season, he was reunited with his former Colts teammate, Ashley Ambrose, producing one of the league's top cornerback pairs. The Falcons have the turnover. Ashley Ambrose comes up with the football. He's got some running room. Strong safety Marty Carter led the team with 131 tackles, his sixth consecutive 100-tackle season. And Ronnie Bradford made a successful switch from right cornerback to free safety. Four-year veteran Henri Crockett provided leadership for young and promising linebackers. Number 54, Chris Draft. Jeff Kelly. And number 53, Mark Simino, who filled in for injured starters Jesse Tuggle and Keith Brooking. Brooking was playing at a Pro Bowl level, leading the team in tackles before he went down. And Jesse the Hammer Tuggle one of the premier linebackers in the NFL will look to get back on track next season. Despite injuries to end Pella McDaniels and tackle Shane Drenette, the defensive line kept up its level of play with tackles Travis Hall and Ed Jasper. Ends Patrick Kearney. And Brady Smith and reserves Chuck Wiley and Sean Sueda. Back at full strength in 2001, the Falcons' defense will once again be an imposing force. Offensive tackle Bob Whitfield, the man of many faces, has manhandled defensive ends for nine seasons. In the 2000 season opener, he established a Falcons team record with his 113th consecutive start. Joining Whitfield on the offensive line was tackle Ephraim Salam, guard Kelvin Collins, center Todd McClure, and rookie guard Travis Claridge, who started all 16 games. New offensive line coach Pete Mangurian is working to improve a unit that struggled last season. 
The problem stemmed from the constant shuffling across the line due to injuries. They never developed any cohesiveness. Chris Chandler is hurt. He's got his left hand over his face after taking a horrific shot. As a result, it was a trying season for Chris Chandler, who had his own ups and downs, suffering a concussion in week 10. Despite the troubles up front, Jamal Anderson managed to pile up more than 1,000 yards on the ground for the fourth time in his career. Coming off knee surgery, Anderson proved his resiliency, starting all 16 games and running with an engine that never slows down. He is a complete back who is equally skilled as a receiver. Jamal Anderson up the middle, fighting, squirming, and pulling into the end zone, touchdown Falcons. He was the man on that drive. Opening holes for Jamal was rugged fullback Bob Christian, who had some highlights of his own with a career-high 44 receptions. It was a ground game that turned to life in Week 17. The Falcons were not about to go quietly into the offseason. They had one more game to play, and Jamal Anderson led the way by rushing for over 100 yards. But he was only part of the offensive explosion. Chandler wants to throw. Here comes the blitz firing across the middle. It's Jefferson. 10-5. Touchdown, Falcons. They take the lead here. The defense also contributed, keeping Elvis Gerback under fire. Gerback is blindsided. Ball Blindside hit came from Marty Carter on the blitz. Gerback never saw him, lost the football, and there was Derek Vaughn. Vaughn's fumble recovery put the Falcons in range to strike again. Touchdown, Falcons. They get it done. Koslowski makes the catch for six, and the Falcons have opened up the ball game. And on the following series, Morton Anderson closed the curtains. Here's the snap. The hold. The kick is on the way. It's up. And it is good. Morton Anderson is five for five on the day. Anderson's five field goal performance extended his NFL record consecutive scoring streak to 269 games. Come on, Morton. How about a smile? Morton Anderson puts the Falcons on the board. On Morton the Anderson has and delivered the goods. Good. As the all-time leading scorer for two different franchises, his next step may be the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Anderson helps set the standard on special teams. Let's get this thing rolling right here. Here we go this now, baby. Play. This is the biggest play of the game right here. Now we've got our three wedge left. One, two, three. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Let's go. The Falcons punt coverage unit was number one in the NFL. Thanks to specialists John Dale Carty, Gerald McBurrows, Gary Downs, and Elijah Williams. And just as dynamic on special teams was the return unit. Seventh round pick Derek Vaughn averaged almost 28 yards per kickoff return to lead the league. He also topped the NFL with three returns for touchdowns. Derek Vaughn into the end zone for the touchdown, a return of 96 yards. Tim Dwight also showcased his skills on special teams moving into second place on the Falcons' all-time list for punt return yardage behind Billy White Shoes Johnson. Taken wide to the near side. Gets a block. 40, 45, 50. Now cutting it to yes. the middle. 40, yes. 30, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Tim Dwight. Oh, yes. 70-yard touchdown by Tim Dwight. They were a duo that couldn't be beat. Taken by Derek Vaughn at the goal line. 
30, 35, 40. Has only Elam to beat. Makes the turn on Elam. It is off to the races. Far sideline. Yes! One, yes! Yes! Oh, man! And yes, touchdown! What a great run that was. Oh, oh, 100 yards. The strength of the Falcon special teams is something Dan Reeves can build on in the 2001 season. With the first selection in the 2001 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Michael Vick. Michael, Michael Vick. Introducing lightning quick, Michael Vick. He's got speed. He's got strength. He's got style. After a bold trade that landed them the top choice in the draft, the Falcons selected the lively lefty from Virginia Tech. A magician on the field. Vic dazzles fans with his bag of tricks. He is one of the most talented players to come out of the college ranks in recent memory. Jack Fredman goes back to throw. Oh, and he fires a howitzer down the field on a leaping grab on the five yard line. Rolling to his left, looking to throw. Gunning it into the end zone. With the new millennium upon us, Vic symbolizes the next generation of Falcons. Dedicated, fearless, electrifying. In 2001, the Falcons will again turn to quarterback Chris Chandler. Given proper protection and good health, he will have more opportunities to make the big plays. Fires into yes, the end zone, yes. man out there. Touchdown, Falcons. Dan Reeves will also work in some new faces, including 11-year veteran punter Chris Moore. Georgia native quarterback Eric Zier. Corner Conrad Hamilton. And safety Chris Hudson. They will join a Falcons tradition, 36 years in the making, with a proud past and a talented nucleus that has already brought one conference championship to Atlanta. The legacy of Falcons football, which began with Tommy Novus and was advanced by White Shoes Johnson, will remain secure in the hands of tomorrow's stars. Look out, here it comes to the near side, midfield, 45-40. Yes. 35-30, one man to beat. Yes. And touchdown, Derek Vaughn. That's the way to go, look out, focus. Stay on, focus, let's keep going. Setting up now, firing. And it is tipped and intercepted. That was terrific. The selection of Michael Vick marks a new era for the Falcons franchise. A franchise with tremendous potential for the future. With a renewed sense of purpose, the Falcons are ready to take flight in 2001. Edge Pro Gel presents the Atlanta Falcons ultimate performance of 2000. In the final game of the season, Jamal Anderson helped the Falcons possess the ball for over 40 minutes with 107 yards rushing. Chris Chandler threw a pair of touchdown passes to Brian Kozlowski and Sean Jefferson. And Morton Anderson kicked five field goals in a 29-13 Christmas Eve victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. Edge Pro Gel is the official shave gel of the NFL. Save your skin.
This NFL Films production has been brought to you by the National Football League. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com.